Hey man, the whole thing, the whole thing. <laughs> this is year three for me uh, in this uh, wonderful conference, the Majestic Mississippi Conference. But I heard about Red Cross before I got to Mississippi. I was serving in North Alabama as a brother who was a pastor in Oxford, Alabama, who told me who I was made aware of Red Pacific Cross, how dynamic she is, how she could sell you a bottle of water while you in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> Reverend Cross is the district superintendent in the, of the Hattiesburg district in the Mississippi Conference of the United Methodist Church. And uh, she is the second African American female uh, district superintendent in our conference. Amen. Amen. Uh, it's such a tremendous feat here in this uh, wonderful state of Mississippi. I am so grateful for uh, her because she's been, she served here for three years. And this is her first time coming back Amen. since she uh, left uh, this appointment. And we were so excited that she was, her time was free to come and share with us. She is married to Todd Cross. And uh, she has, she and Todd are the proud parents of five. Amen. Erica, Sister Erica was here from Nashville. Amen. Then there's, uh, this, this is not in any particular order. Chris, Christopher, Taylor, Ashford, and Marcus. Amen. 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 And listen, friends, I just, I'm so excited because I, this is my first time having an opportunity to hear Red Cross actually preach. Amen. I am exposed to her leadership ability. And I'm astounded and inspired. And I'm looking forward to continuing to serve in this conference and lean from her. So after we have been blessed with the selection, no, we're not, we're not going to be blessed by selection. We're going to hear a word from the Lord. Well, praise the Lord, church. Praise, praise the Lord. It's so good to be back here at St. Elizabeth. Amen. Y'all know it's so good to live. Amen. Churches around that I was blessed, I was blessed to serve and to serve with. It's so good to see you, my United Methodist friends, Emma Baptist friends. Just go ahead. So glad to see in another denomination. Just thank you for coming out this evening. It is a blessing to be with you today. Oh, and that's a wonderful introduction, Reverend Brothers. Yes, thank you so much, Reverend Bozier. I'm going to remember a couple of things. You know that, right? You have to see. They don't have to see me again, but you have to see me a long time. <laughs> yes, but it's a blessing. I thank God for you, Pastor. He's indeed been a blessing to us in this conference. We're very, very proud of the integrity, the ingenuity, and the wisdom that we find in our young pastors. And we thank God for our young
I'd like to thank you to God first of all, as my grandmother would say, for a portion of health and strength. <laughs> Just to be able to come into this building to worship you, to lift up your name in praise. To God, we thank you for the worship we've had so far, the praise and the lifting up your word through song by your music ministers. Dear God, we thank you for the offering that's been lifted, dear God, as your people have given back to you just a small portion of the many blessings you blessed them with. So gracious God, as we sit at this time acknowledging your whole presence, open up our ears, open up our minds, open up our hearts to hear fresh words from you. We thank you, Lord, now and forevermore for your darling son, Jesus Christ, through whom we've been adopted into your family. Yes. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. We all say amen. 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 And unlike some of my Baptist brothers, when I say this, I mean this. I'm not going to hold you for no long time. <laughs> quite a few faces in here that I've passed and they know that to be the truth. I think I have the best record of performing funerals right here and can get you in and out and to that graveside and this thing out. So, <laughs> so I won't hold you a long time, my sisters and brothers, but I will be obedient to the Holy Spirit. I want to share with you a reading of scripture that comes from Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, in the first four verses, and then verse 13. Isaiah 43. And it reads as follows. But now, says the Lord, the one who created you, Jacob, the one who formed you, Israel, don't fear. I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When through the rivers, they won't sleep over you. When you walk through the fire, you won't be scorched, and the flame won't burn. Because I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I have given Egypt as your ransom. Cush and Seba in your place. Because you are precious in my eyes. You are honored and I love you. I give people in your place and nations in exchange for your life. And verse 13 says, from eternity to eternity, I am God. No one can snatch anyone out of my hand. No one can undo what I have done. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Amen. But now, I want to talk for a little while about confidence, uncertainty. Confident, uncertain. Sounds like oxymoron, doesn't it? Confident, uncertain. Let's go back and see why. You and I, as the children of the king, should have confident, uncertainty in time. When Isaiah is talking to Israel, when he's talking to Jacob, he is talking to them right behind all of this horrible destruction that has been visited upon this top number one favorite nation of the Lord. And just before, in, in, in chapters 40 through 42, he's talking about what the Lord has allowed in the lives of the Israelites. Mm -hmm. He's talking about the death, the destructions, how the battle 
Babylonians, how the Assyrians have come through and just devastated them. Yeah. The nation that was once the top nation yeah. in the whole world. Yeah. You remember the Queen of Sheba traveled so far during the reign of Solomon just to behold yeah. how wonderful yeah. this nation what? Look now. Because of their disobedience, <laughs> because they decided to worship false gods yeah. and idols gods, mm -hmm. and no matter how many times they had fallen to previous destruction and armies coming their way, they would cry out to God, Lord, save us, and the Lord would come to their rescue. God would save his people. And they were promised no doubt that, oh, yes, Lord, we will worship only you. The one true God who made a way out of nowhere, who brought us through the wilderness into this promised land. We're going to serve you. And times will be good. And they will get good. And after a while, they go back to their old ways. Copying what their neighbors was doing. Enjoying a good time, worshiping the idol gods, and living without concern for their fellow sister and brothers. God would be angry again. And they would fall again to more devastation. But yet when they would cry, God loved them so much. God would come running and deliver them. But finally they had gotten to the point to where they would not do any better. Mm. They would half-heartedly thank God for what God had done. Mm. They would thank God in the way they wanted to thank God. Mm. They would serve God in the way they wanted to serve God. Come on down. And all those commandments and all the writings of the Mosaic law just went to mm. They began to do their own thing. Yeah. And they began to believe it was their own thing to do their own thing with. Yeah. But then, God said, no, I can't allow. And those mighty armies of the Assyrians come tearing through yeah. and destroyed every man, woman, and child but a small remnant. Yeah. Why? Because they were reaping what they had sown. Yeah, yeah. So all this had taken place, but Isaiah, God had called Isaiah to come give them a word of hope. Because you see, God loves his people. Yeah, yeah. And see, another thing we need to remember that God is a covenant keeper. You know yeah, yeah. Uh huh. He's a covenant keeper. He had made a covenant. He had made a promise to Abraham that this nation was going to be great. And see, since God is not a man, he couldn't lie. So he was going to live into that. So now we're listening to a word of hope in the 43rd chapter. We're hearing a word of hope that transitions from destruction and devastation to a time of redemption and rebuilding of God's kingdom. Mm -hmm. And that transition is announced with two little words. But now. Mm -hmm. God has allowed all this stuff to happen. He's allowed all this death, this destruction, these wars, all this man and tear down everything. Even the temple completely destroyed. But now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. He wants to remind you who he is. Come on right now. Right. See, sometimes you got to be brought down real low. Come on right now. Yeah. You got to get down to the last. Yeah. Come on now. You got to get you just so sick you can't get up and let somebody help you. Oh, come on now. So you even pay attention to what you need to pay attention to. Yeah. You're so used to having your own way. You gotta get to the point where your own way has brought you down to a level of destruction. And you can't find anybody else to blame. Come on. But, but now you better listen. And so God says, and He says, you know, Jacob, Israel, me, the one who created you. 
The one who has loved you from the very beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. The one who has made you a people when you were not a people. Right. The one who formed you and gave you a name when you didn't have a name. The one that delivered you up out of slavery yeah. and made you the first instead of the last. Yeah. That's who I am. He said, even though you are down right now, and you're discouraged, and you have taken one ginormous whoop, I'm still with you. Yeah. I've never left you. I'm with you always. Yeah. You see, you went through that fire, but you didn't get burned. Yeah. You went through that river, the water spoiled over you, but you did not drink. No. Thank you. Why? Because I am with you. Because I am God. That same word he gave to Israel, he's giving it to you today, church. We have a tendency to focus so hard on what's going on around us in the world. We give credit to so many things and so many people for being in charge of our lives. Sometimes we get to running around here like in it, in it. Lord, the sky's falling. The sky's falling. Lord, what we're going to do. Lord, look who's in the white house. Lord, what we're going to do. Lord, what we're going to do. Come on. Yes, God tell you, I am with you. I have a going in with you. I'm the same God. Because you, I don't care how much we talk about 
the history of our churches, and they have been a blessing that we have. But the church only exists for one reason. Can everybody tell me what that one reason is? Can everybody tell me what that one reason is? Whoa, to make disciples. To make disciples. To make disciples. Not to feel good, but to make disciples. That's right. Not to do nothing, but to make disciples. When God chose Abraham and told him that he would bless his seed, on, it would become numerous. Uh -huh. It was so that disciples could be made. Right. So that you can share the message and the witness of your salvation, of your redemption, not just with yourself, but with who? Others. Everybody. 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 And you're sharing this with them because it's something that you know that you know each other. Right. And it's a great thing. Let me tell you something, sister. I don't know about you. But when you get something real nice, I mean really nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's real, real nice. <laughs> you want everybody to know about it. Yeah. And all. Yeah. A lover who's gonna always. 
always make sure that you care for us. Oh, yeah. A lover who's never, ever, ever, ever gonna forsake you. Oh, yeah. And you mean you can't tell the world oh, about the love that you have yeah. for us? That's free now. Man, that's Confident uncertainty is this. <coughs> Thank <laughs> you. 